What's up guys, this is Teresa Yanaris and welcome to Faith Under Fire. We are in the measure section of the map method and we are covering modern distortions of new age and new thought. And today we are talking specifically about the illusion of enlightenment. So if you wanna stay in touch with the series, make sure you jump on the email list, subscribe to the channel and let's go. So we are talking about the narcissism inherent within modern distortions. We are talking about the illusion of enlightenment, which I've defined as false promises of spiritual advancement. So how does Jesus reconcile this concept? Jesus directly reconciles and counters the beliefs and practices of the new thought movement and the new age by emphasizing reliance on God, submission to his will, and the importance of faith in God rather than in one's own power. In new thought, the focus is on self-reliance, mental power, and the idea that individuals can control or create their own reality through thoughts and affirmations. However, Jesus teaches us that true spiritual advancement and transformation come from not human effort or mental techniques, but through faith, obedience to God, and a reliance on his grace. Christianity reconciles the illusion of enlightenment offered by the new age by contrasting it with the true spiritual advancement and fulfillment found in the beatific vision or sanctification. While the new age often promises immediate or superficial spiritual progress through practices and techniques, Catholicism teaches that genuine enlightenment comes from the grace of God and the transformation of the soul through a life of virtue and holiness. The ultimate goal in Christianity is the beatific vision where the soul sees God face to face and experiences perfect happiness in his presence. This profound spiritual fulfillment is attained through a faithful and humble relationship with God rather than through self-centered or disordered practices. The catechism says the beatific vision is the ultimate fulfillment of human existence and it surpasses all earthly understandings of enlightenment. First Corinthians says, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. This verse underscores that true spiritual alignment and fulfillment are found in the divine promise of eternal happiness with God, which transcends any false promises of modern distortions. The beatific vision is the direct, intuitive, and immediate vision of God as he truly is, enjoyed by the blessed in heaven. It is the ultimate fulfillment and perfection of human desires where the soul is granted perfect knowledge of and union with God. In this state, the individual experiences unending happiness, peace, and the full realization of God's infinite goodness and beauty. The beatific vision is considered the final reward for the faithful where they partake in the divine life and see God face to face. And this is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. First Corinthians 13, 12 says, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. The beatific vision is the complete fulfillment of the soul's longing for God, where all earthly desires are fully satisfied in the direct presence of the divine. According to Catholic teaching, the beatific vision is the ultimate goal of human life and the highest form of happiness. St. Teresa of Avila, a Carmelite mystic and doctor of the church, offers profound insights into the spiritual progress of the soul in her work, The Interior Castle. She describes the soul's journey toward union with God as passing through seven stages or mansions, each representing a deeper level of spiritual development and intimacy with the divine. This path culminates in the beatific vision where the soul experiences perfect union with God. Okay. So we're going to talk about the mansions, the first mansion. These are the entry points to the spiritual life where the soul becomes aware of God and begins the journey of conversion. The focus is on repentance, prayer, avoiding sin, but distractions and worldly attachments still hinder the soul's progress. In the second mansion, this is a stage where the soul becomes more committed to prayer and the spiritual life, seeking to grow closer to God. However, struggles with temptations and external distractions continue. In the third mansion, the soul practices greater devotion, discipline, and virtue. The individual may be outwardly pious and committed to God's will, but has not yet reached deeper levels of interior transformation. Pride and self-satisfaction can still be obstacles. In the fourth mansion, the soul experiences the beginnings of contemplative prayer, where God initiates a more profound intimacy. The soul moves beyond mental prayer into the more direct experiences of God's presence. This stage is marked by greater detachment from worldly things and increased inner peace. 
in the fifth mansion, the soul enters a deeper contemplation, often referred to as the spiritual marriage. The soul is now much more united with God in prayer and its will is more aligned with his. This stage involves greater trials and spiritual purification, but also a profound sense of union with God's will. In the sixth mansion, this is known as spiritual betrothal. The soul is now betrothed to Christ, experiencing a deep intimacy with God. This is not yet the perfect union of the seventh mansion, but it's a profound closeness where the soul is being prepared for full union. The seventh mansion is known as mystical marriage or perfect union with God. The soul and God are now perfectly united beyond the need for visions or extraordinary experiences. St. Teresa of Avila describes this as an intimate, peaceful, and unshakable oneness with God, where the soul's will is entirely aligned with his. The soul lives in continual awareness of God's presence. St. Teresa's description of the soul's journey reflects the broader Catholic teaching that the soul must undergo a process of purification, growth, and transformation in this life to prepare for the beatific vision in the next. The beatific vision is the final eternal union with God that the soul seeks, and the spiritual journey, as St. Teresa describes it, is a gradual ascent toward this goal. The soul moves from an initial awareness of God through struggles and trials toward deeper mystical union, purifying itself through prayer, suffering, and detachment. The beatific vision, therefore, is the fulfillment of this journey where the soul sees God directly face to face and experiences eternal unmediated communion with him. St. Teresa emphasizes that this path requires perseverance and prayer, humility, and total surrender to God's will as the soul is gradually conformed to his likeness and made ready for the ultimate glory of heaven. Today, we were discussing the illusion of enlightenment often found within modern distortions and how the Catholic Church responds and answers these distortions. This is Faith Under Fire with Teresa and Aris. Thank you guys so much for being here. Make sure that you subscribe, be strong in the Lord, and keep the faith.